Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Scrap Mechanic. Now, a couple days ago, I built this very strange walker, which was based off of this clip that I saw on the internet. And on that video, I got this comment. So I went to look up what that was, and I found this clip on the internet. In this video, we are focusing on this thing, which is the attack track, apparently. Which, when you're looking at how it works, on this extremely old grainy clip that I found from a commercial back in like the VHS days, is this thing a tank or is it a walker? I think kind of yes to both. It's, it's a walking tank essentially, the way that this works. Now it's really hard to see exactly what's going on in this video, but thankfully I found this image which is a much higher resolution. So we can see in this image that inside these tracks is a wheel that has gear teeth on it and it essentially runs along a toothed track that is contained within the tank tracks. So I'm anticipating that this is going to be a lot harder to replicate than the previous walker that I built because we don't have fine toothed gears like this in Scrap Mechanic. I'm gonna hope I can make this work without the need for those teeth at all and uh, we're just gonna see what happens with it. I'm anticipating this to give me a lot of trouble as I try to replicate the motion here. But we're gonna start off by just using a small wheel. I'm gonna build a proof of concept first before I build out the entire vehicle and uh, we're gonna hope for the best. Let's see what happens. So kind of similar to that previous build that I just showed at the beginning of this video, uh, we are going to have to separate objects from the original creation because these tank tracks cannot be attached to the body. We're gonna have to have them get separated after it spawns in. So if we're gonna be using this wheel as our standard, I think the track is then gonna have to be one block higher than the wheel because it needs that space to roll around around the edge. Uh, so let's just try to create an edge right here. All right, so let's focus on making the curve or as curvy as Scrap Mechanic is going to let me make it. This did work last time. I don't know why I built this out of this material. What's the friction of this material? No, we're not using this material. We need higher friction. Okay, so I think that's the best I'm gonna get this curve. Uh, so let's just extend this back and see what happens with this. All right, so as I'm building this, I am noticing some interesting potential limitations. I put a glass wall on this side. The wheel is gonna be just on this inside part here. Here, I need another layer to this actually. Uh, and I'm realizing that in order to keep the wheel in here, I'm gonna need one block on either side. This should allow the wheel to rotate, I believe. The axle of the wheel should essentially ride along here and then ride along here as it goes around. But is this thing, did I make this too heavy? This probably has to be really light to flip around. How heavy is this block? Oh no. I might have to replace the concrete slab which has high friction with something lighter. Maybe I can make a wood version out of this, but let's just at least, let's just have a proof of concept here first. All right, I gotta start by building the base vehicle and this thing is actually gonna have, potentially have tank steering. It, it is a tank walker after all. And now I have to figure out how do I get this on here okay oh look at the oh, ooh, oh this might be working so if i do that and then i delete this there we go it's a separate object now look at that all right this is promising so now i can disconnect i should have probably saved that as an object but we'll figure it out later all right to keep things simple i'm just gonna give it forward and back i'm not gonna do tank steering yet i just need to see what happens here okay here it goes <laughs> okay, that's what I was a little bit afraid of. Is it because they're too heavy? It's probably because they're... It's a combination of I'm too light, they're too heavy, I don't have enough force, good friction, like... Mm, I really don't know what to do about this. Okay, let's try to make this as light as possible. Okay, I believe I have drastically reduced the weight of these things. Let's see if this makes a difference now. Oh, there was a start. Like, they lifted up a little bit. All right, what happens if I... Let's increase the engine power. Let's go faster. Oh! <gasps> oh! <gasps> we got a thing to happen. Oh, it is so glitchy, though. But it's like... One side's working. Why isn't the other side working? These are identical. Oh, my God. This is so glitchy. 
To be fair, I've seen some other videos. I didn't want to show too much of anybody else's video just for copyright reasons. I just showed like a 20 something frame clip from the actual commercial. So I don't think I'm going to get hit for that. Um, but this is something, isn't it? I want to try a version that doesn't use the concrete thing. Maybe the weight was the big issue. Because if we can go slower and be more stable, uh, that'd be great. But I'm definitely going to save this right now as like a prototype track. All right, so now let's try replacing all of the concrete with wood. All right, here we go. I've got wooden version now. Let's see if this works any better. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, do I need to go faster again? All right, faster. Why is it only the left side that seems to want to go? Oh, this is so... That's an issue. That is an issue. See, the problem is it doesn't... It doesn't maintain friction as it tries to go over this part. Okay, so I'm making an attempt at uh, recreating the kind of gear tooth method that it's using. I don't know if this is going to be... Uh, functional and scrap mechanic. They might just get in the way of each other, especially the top ones. I might have to have a completely different dimensioned uh, track for this to actually work, but let's at least see what happens. All right, so now this is going to be the new wheel. There we go. So you see, if it is down on the bottom here, it it's, it's narrow, but it shouldn't... It, I don't know. It shouldn't collide with those. Let's see what happens. I'm definitely going to put this really slow so we can watch it going. All right, that's not good. That is not good. Oh my goodness, but it is so easy to flip it. <gasps> I think all I gotta do, maybe, I might, I might just have to uh, extend these. Uh, these might have to be one block higher, which is gonna make them even more bulky. I think these just need to be separated by an extra block. I think this is, might be doable. Okay, here we go. My only concern with this is I could technically fall out right now the way I have this. Speaking of which, uh, that's exactly what just happened. Alright, uh, that just means we have to extend this. There's- no, this doesn't- does this work? Okay, no, this is a problem because now when I detach this, it can no longer fall into the thing. Oh no, this is bad. Unless, what if I use small pipes for this? Okay, so now with the small pipes, it should stick out just enough to grab the... Oh, no, that doesn't work either. All right, I'm going to use some cardboard block to help me here because in order to prevent these things from tipping over, I need them to have a wider base. And this is one of the lighter blocks in the game, so that's hopefully going to help me with this. All right, and another modification I'm going to make is putting screws on the tips of these because it'll extend them by less than a block, giving them slightly more reach, I hope. And hopefully this will allow them to grip better onto the teeth in here. Oh, but that doesn't allow me to weld it now because they interfere with the weld point. Hmm. Hmm. I got an idea. I'm gonna change the teeth locations. All right, so I've changed the teeth locations, so now they are in line with each other vertically. I'm hoping that's not gonna interfere with anything, but it should allow me to weld this on here with the screws now. All right, yeah, see? Now I can put the screws in between the teeth, and they still have a weld point. Let's watch carefully as it... Okay, no. Nope. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep, still doesn't help. Exactly what I was afraid of is happening, which I should have seen coming. It's essentially trying to grip on both sides at the same time. Hey guys, look, I'm doing it. <laughs> so we're just completely jammed up in the gears right now, but at least I have the torque to spin these things. So that's a, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. That's one good thing about this. I need to be able to move down the track though. Oh my goodness, I think, I may have solved it. I had to create a new type of just a, a custom tooth system because here's the issue I'm having is like you see how this it it goes over and it seems to work but if I hold it watch what happens. It is now stuck like it gets jammed in the teeth but over on the other side watch if we get over to the other side here if I do this I can kind of wiggle my way out but now if I go to this side watch what happens. It keeps rolling. So you're probably wondering what's different about that side. Well, it's really hard to see. Let me go ahead and just open it up. I'm just going to open up this whole side. 
All right, so you can see I've actually gotten rid of the teeth that are close to the edge to prevent them from getting jammed up. On the other side, I've deleted this and I've changed these wedges to be facing this way instead. So this is able to wedge right in this little gap. But then when it goes down, it's able to fall down out of this gap rather than getting jammed up against the, uh, the pipe that was here. And this seems to be... This right here seems to be a working formula. Here, let me do the same thing to this side. So here, that goes like that, and that goes like that. So that might be enough to work. And I think if I have the teeth here, it also gets jammed up. So I think this, this might be the best option right here. All right, I think I've done the same thing to both sides. Uh, let's see what happens now when I go forward. There we go. Yeah, wedges in there, and it comes out just fine. Is this working? Oh, why is it stopping? Okay, now let me see what happens if I actually put... If I put these back on this part, because I haven't tried this with the wedges yet. All right, I'll just do it on this side for now. Yep, see, that's what I was afraid of. It gets jammed right there. It doesn't actually go down to the other side, and that's no good. Man, just having that one difference, it makes so much of a difference. All right, so I did a lot more workshopping with the tank track design, and uh, I think I've found this is going to be the new best design. So instead of the pipes being vertical like this, which makes them stick out taller, I have them horizontal like this. Um, and then that way, I was also able to take the, the screws off the end of these. And this seems to have a bit of a smoother experience. Check it out. We'll zoom in a little bit here. It does get a little bit of a of slipping on the ends. Oh, that was actually the worst I've seen it do. It, it's been good up until that point. But as you can see, it seems to do pretty well. And I've tried here. I'll, I'll show you. I've tried both having the peg be in the middle and having them be two like that. And I'm honestly not sure if there's really much of a difference. It felt like the two of them had a better had a better chance of avoiding slippage. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go with the two of them. But the main thing is, is this one, it slips, but it doesn't get stuck. So at the, like, it's kind of like a cost benefit. What do you prefer, slippage or getting stuck? At least with slippage, um, you can kind of power through it after a few tries. When it gets stuck, you have to like stop going. You have to back up a little bit to unhinge yourself. Um, so I think this is an overall more convenient system here. All right, so now it is time to build a vehicle to attach these things to. And um, I'm, I'm going to make my own vehicle. I'm not going to really base it off of the vehicle in the video that much. I just wanted to use the walking tank track concept as a whole. Okay, so I think the best way to start is just by starting where the wheels are going to attach. So to attach this, uh, I think I should be able to... I'm going to have an extra cardboard block. This is the cardboard block that gets shot and we're going to attach that to a bearing like this so i should be able to weld this i think right there i'm going to have it so that it's facing forward there we go that should be fine okay so now as i build this vehicle i am going to have to keep in mind that this entire track is going to move all the way back there so i got to make sure that there's room for this thing this is going to be this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so I am gonna draw some inspiration from the original design and have it so that the tracks are going to overlay each other. So this track should be able to fit all the way back into this slot. I think I measured it out correctly. I hope I did. All right, so now this one attaches right here. So you can see there's even gonna be some overlap. All right, so now I just gotta figure out what I just did here and do it again over on this side somehow. Okay, so right here we are potentially looking at the wheelbase or the track base, but I before I do any more to this, I have to confirm, does this work? Are these going to smoothly slide into these uh, slots and be able to turn without friction? Things like that. So let's uh, hook this up with actual tank steering. All right, I got my tank steering all hooked up and I've got it saved so I can respawn it in with everything attached, but let's go ahead and detach all of these tracks and hope that this is a functional creation right here. We're gonna go relatively slow to start off with. Oh, I just realized a big issue. I am touching the ground. I need, oh man. <laughs> Well, I definitely didn't measure this correctly, so I've got to get rid of the whole bottom layer of this, which means all of the tank steering and stuff is going to probably fall. Actually, no. 
No, it's all attached to the walls. Oh, oh, I lucked out there. All right, but the seat's gonna fall off. I just gotta reattach the seat to the buttons. Okay, here we go. Maiden voyage of our prototype wheelbase and wheel design. All right, and forward. Oh, that might be a little bit, oh, that's a little bit too fast. Hold on, slow it down, slow it down. Come on. Oh, why aren't you working anymore? What happened? Does it not work with four? What's happening over here? Oh, no. Am I not heavy enough? Maybe I'm not heavy enough. Let's add a whole bunch of concrete to this thing. All right, there we go. This should make us much heavier. Maybe that'll help us grip the uh, treads more. Come on, just get... Ugh. Man, I thought this was the ideal tank tread system. Maybe the slippage system isn't as good anymore. And also it does look... Oh wait, how did that fall off? How did that one fall off? Is it because... Oh, it's because it goes too far. I don't know. This is not turning out very well. I think I also need to give the front ones more room. Yeah, I need to give them one block of wiggle room. What I have right now is clearly not enough. All right, back to the drawing board. All right, I've gotten to a state where I seem to be going forward and I'm seeing why some of the tank tracks were falling out sometimes. You might notice that, like, see right there? That I'm falling out currently. Uh, because when things are happening in the other tank tracks, it is causing the vehicle to angle up and sometimes it angles up perfectly in a way that this is about to fall out. And yeah, we're about to fall out of that one right now, just like that. So I am trying to figure out how to mitigate that because that's a big issue. All right, guys, I think I figured out the problem on how to make these things more likely to stay on the bottom and not floating up in the air. And that is to add their own suspension to these things. Because look at this. This thing is staying right where I want it. Okay, and now the bush is going to interrupt this part. Very important part. Thank you, bush. All right, yeah, so as you can see, this thing is keeping it flat. Whereas if you look at the one up here, that thing is floating up and down. Like sometimes it's not where it needs to be. And that is what's going to cause it to fall out. But this one, this one is always exactly where it needs to be height wise. It is so much better. So yeah, I just need to add suspension to all these things, which is going to change a lot more stuff, but we're getting there. Tiny adjustments slowly leading towards the end goal. All right, I've put suspension on all four of these things and I don't know if it's better. I think it's better. You do still see some of what I was trying to avoid where it's li it's kind of still lifting and hovering a little bit. Even despite the suspension trying to do its thing. We have a pretty low gl ground clearance too, which could be part of the issue. I don't know. It's just, this is just such a weird vehicle, guy. Like it's just, this is really weird. I haven't gotten any detracking with this version yet. So perhaps it's still an improvement. So let's just stick with this. I'm going to build out the rest of it. I don't know what the rest of it's going to look like, but let's build out the rest of it and see what happens. All right, so I've been building for a little while, and this is what I got so far. Uh, I got this thing, which is, well, I can't spin right now because I'm still on the lift, uh, but this is going to be a free spinning thing for whatever reason. I don't know. I just felt like there was a spinny thing that belonged there. Uh, I have a quad barrel futuristic looking cannon. I just found some random piece. It's got some pretty cool visuals to it. Uh, this is not going to be an articulating cannon. I don't want to get that complicated. It's just all about the tracks. I just wanted to have something that looks cool. Um, so yeah, I built this cool turret thing, but I've realized an issue as I was putting the spud guns down that are going to detach the, ta the tracks. I realized that if this spud gun is here and then this track starts moving, it's going to collide with the spud gun, which is going to prevent all of this from working. So I need to come up with a system that the spud gun can shoot these things and then stay out of the way because pretty much all of this plane is off limits for a spud gun. So I got some ideas. Okay, so here's the genius plan. Uh, I'm going to have a piston right inside there. Just barely enough room to fit it with these controls. I attach a spud gun to the piston. This piston is hooked up to a logic eight that is on by default. So the, this is going to be out like this. And then the spud gun's hooked up to a different logic gate. And then what is going to happen is when I get in the seat, there is a sensor next to the seat. And this sensor detects when you get in the seat. So right now you can see that the uh, spud guns are all out. And when I get in the seat, 
the spud guns actually go in out of the way. And at the same time, I haven't hooked this up yet because I don't want to detach the tracks. I want this to be a savable creation. But at the same time, um, that sensor is going to trigger that other logic gate, which triggers all the spud guns. So we should detach all the tracks and bring the spud guns in just by getting in the seat, making this thing fully drivable. That's the plan, at least. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've painted it all up. I've finished building the design and I think it is ready for its official 1.0 voyage. So here we go, as soon as I get in the seat, automatically, you can see it settles down. You can even see the suspension doing its job. You can see it working. All right, so now let's uh, let's start going forward. Let's see if it actually works. That was an amazing first rotation. This is doing great. This is actually doing wonderful right now. This is such a, it's, it's another just crazy engineering concept. It's a tank walker. All right, but we have some other, we have some other stuff in here. So we can go backwards. Let's see how back, backwards shouldn't be any different. But I've never tried steering yet. Technically this has tank steering. I don't know how that's gonna function with, uh, with how these tracks work. But let's try it. Let's say I want to go in that direction toward, uh, towards those rocks, those rocks off in the distance. I'm going to have to turn a little bit. So if I press going to the right, you can see that the left side is trying to rotate forward while the right side is trying to rotate backwards. And so far. Oh, I've actually over -rot I've rotated more than I wanted to. This is actually going good. This worked. Now let's go forward. I just rotated almost 90 degrees. I turned in place. I actually wasn't, I wasn't expecting that to work. We can rot, we can turn with this thing. All right, here, let's, I wanna, let's navigate. Let's, if I wanna go towards the rocks, I'm gonna try to point myself towards the rocks. I'm a little bit worried about falling out of the tracks with the turning, but there we go. We've now turned towards the rocks. Perfect, and we're going straight towards the rocks. It's not the fastest vehicle, but it, uh, it does the thing. It does, it, it goes. <laughs> I can't believe I got this. This is another almost three hour build. Like it took a long time to get this thing to work, but it is working and I am happy with it. The only thing this is missing is the spud guns don't do anything. So let me just really quick put in a spud gun circuit. All right, there we go. So now number five, you can shoot stuff that's in front of you. You have no up and down aiming at all, but um, who needs up and down aiming when your tracks do this? They're they're not related. I just it, it, it's just it's just about the tracks is all I'm saying. Out of curiosity, what happens if we just ramp the engines up a lot? This is probably just going to make uh oh, it's probably just going to make it not work at all. But let's see what happens. Here we go. Whoa. What are the chances of that? Look what happened here. That is completely stuck. I mean, I had a, oh, that one got stuck too. Uh, that one got stuck. And now this one's pretty much stuck. Nothing can move anymore. Okay, speed, not, not meant for speed. This one is definitely not meant for speed. Well, I think this is pretty much the ideal speed right here. It's not bad. It works. It can turn. It can shoot now. It can go forwards. It can go backwards. It is a, the attack track walking tank or attack track inspired walking tank. And I'm very happy with it. It actually, it actually became a reality, which is kind of weird because it already is a reality. I just made it in a game, which is not real life. It became a non-reality, which I guess it already was a non-reality in the cartoon. So basically I didn't do anything special today. Well, let me know what you guys think of this. And if you happen to miss the Walker video of the creation that I spawned in at the beginning, you can go ahead and check that out on the end screen right here. Hope this video earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.